Michelle, can you hear me on the phone? All right, try now. Hello? M Michelle, can you hear us? Hi. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. See, he's just starting the Facebook Live. Um, so we're going to be using the audio from your phone, the Zoom. Okay. 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 That'll be good. Now, I upgraded the computers and it took longer than we expected. Oh, okay. That's no problem. But as long as you can hear me, that's good. Got you loud and clear. Is this Todd? It is. how to flip this around i mean so it's, it's showing the other way or the camera oh you to flip mm -hmm. this should do it okay let's see okay Just flip again. I mean, yeah, make the flip. What are these filters? We don't want these filters. No. There we go. Can you can you come over here for a second? Sure. And we're gonna plug it in. Plug that in first. Plug that in. Yeah. Yes. All right. So let's think. This goes like. Into the table or over this way? Oh, sure. Yep. Is that good? Okay. Am I good? Yeah. This way? Are you ready? Yes, sir. Sir. Okay. Okay, so we're going to look at the camera. Hey, Facebook Live, how you doing today? Welcome to a show. We got a great show coming your way. And uh, I tell you, it's all about putting America back to work. I got two great guests in-house, and uh, you're going to get a chance to learn a lot about them and how uh, these two experts are going to give us ideas on making sure that we get America back to work. First of all, <laughs> I want you guys to uh, uh, meet my guests real quickly before we start the show, you know, so, uh, uh, and also my, my co-host, Michelle, she's going to be joining us today as well. So uh, sit back and, you know, our first guest is Susan Hollington. She's going to be talking to you about... Uh, some great ideas of getting back to work. And I call this guy the young professor. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Nathan. Nathan. I may steal Nathan, that from you. Uh, Ken Daniel. Uh, he's going to be talking. But I tell you what, let's get ready. Let's get started. Let's do it. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Mics are hot. Yeah. Welcome back to It's Your Life. I'm James Cooley. And I am Michelle Cooley. Hi. How you doing today, Michelle? How you doing today? I am doing great, James. How's everything going with you? Everything is great. You know, uh, I'm in the great uh, state of California, and you're back home. And uh, 
Texas. I will be back tomorrow. <laughs> you know, so what have you been doing all week? Well, I've been working hard. Um, of course, I work remote, so that's a, it's a blessing. And also, I've been hanging out at the house, um, taking care of our black lab, Bella. Uh-huh. She was feeling poorly for the last couple of Aww. days, and now she's back to normal. Wow. Okay, so uh, I know you've been taking her back and forth to the vet, and um, uh, just like you mentioned to me yesterday, she's back to 100% almost. And you know, what else have you been doing? Oh, I've just been going to the gym, working out, um, doing a little bit more running lately, running and stopping, just making sure I keep healthy, you know. Um, it sits uh, the physical body and also clears the mind. Well, I've been doing the same thing here. You know, I've been getting up every day, doing my six miles, six, seven miles, whatever wow. that might be. You know? So uh, it's important that uh, we do that, especially since we got this uh, coronavirus uh, out mm-hmm. here. We have to make sure that we do all we can to uh, stay fit and, you know, to try to help fight off this uh, disease and also uh, just to keep our sanity. You know, so mm-hmm. it's, it's very important that, that we do all of those things. Yeah, so. Exactly. Michelle, we got two great guests here today. And uh, the purpose of the show that uh, we're going to talk about, uh, listening audience, is uh, putting America back to work. And some of the things we're going to talk about today is guaranteed to inspire you about ways to efficiently find your next job. I mean, a lot of people out there are looking for jobs, and, mm-hmm. and a lot of people don't know how to go about you know, searching for them. So we're going to learn about that. And we're going to also talk about provide uh, positive real realities for work during these hard times, just like I mentioned, COVID. And, uh, you know, holidays are that are approaching. You know, so uh, some of the things that we can be preparing ourselves to do. So, and uh, what's the last one, Michelle? I'm going to let you tell the audience about that one. Okay. It's also to provide us with helpful strategies and tools that we can all use in our search for employment. So that is very, very important. It's always important to, you know, have some insight on what the, the employers are looking for and things that we need to work on and practice and, you know, how to go about getting that resume right uh, in order to land that perfect job. You know, so uh, we got two great guests in studio today to help us uh, navigate through these uh Hard times, uh, especially we got a lot of people unemployed right now. And um, our first guest is Susan Hollington. I mean, and she is the CEO of Power Connection of Career Services and Corporations. And she's also a career coach, executive coach, or a speaker, or author. And you probably can throw some other things behind that as well. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then we have. Uh, Nathan, and uh, I like that name, by the way. My little brother' name is Nathan. Oh, <laughs> uh, Nathan Candancer. Uh, I tell you, he's a, a phenomenal young guy, young guy, and you, got, you guys are gonna uh, learn a whole lot about him when he when we bring him on, and we'll tell you a little bit about him uh, when we get to him. But Michelle, you you want to tell the audience a little bit about uh, Susan? Yes, I would love to. Um, Susan Howington is the CEO and founder of the outplacement and executive coaching firm called Power Connections Career Services, Inc. She's a sought-after expert in the career transition field, applying her practical knowledge and intuitive wisdom as a career consulting, executive coach, author, and industry speaker. Her lifelong goal is to help professionals of all levels manage and advance their careers through career enjoyment and fulfillment, which ultimately leads to their success. Susan was profiled by Orange County Metro Magazine as one of the 15 Orange County women who inspire others. She has appeared in many national and regional media outlets that include the Orange County Register, Los Angeles Times, and the Wall Street Journal. She is the author of the book on Amazon.com called How Smart People Sabotage Their Job Search, 10 Mistakes Executives Make and How to Fix Them. 
She has had the pleasure of being a regular guest on a variety of TV and radio shows and is a former host of the Spectrum cable TV show called Eye on Business. Wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. You know what? I can't wait to get her on. So without any further ado, welcome to the show, Susan. Thank you so much, JC. It's a, a real pleasure to be here. It's nice meeting you and and uh, be able to talk about the thing that I love to talk about the most, and that's how to help people find a, a great job. And that's, that's fantastic. Before we get off into that, mm-hmm. can you tell us a little bit about you? Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, I was born in Seattle. Then my father, who loved the desert, moved the whole family to Arizona. And from Arizona, I came to California. But the one thing about something that has remained the same with me is I've always loved to help people. Since I was a little tiny girl, um, I was recognized by my teachers and people around me as someone who was always helpful. And as I got older, I loved business. And I found my sweet spot in my career that I could match business with helping people. And that's how I got into the career uh, coaching industry. Wow. What was the inspiration behind your company, Power Connection Career Services? Well, you know, finding your next job, it, it requires that people connect the dots and it can be connecting people. It can be connecting skills with a job uh, posting. It can be, it's all about connecting. So I wanted people to understand that there's a lot of power in understanding how to connect yourself with opportunities. And that's how I came up with the name Power Connections Career Services. Michelle. Um, that's, that's really amazing. So you've been helping people find meaningful work mm-hmm. and meaningful careers for a very long time. Yes. Can you tell us how did you get into this line of work and did you always want to be a career coach? I actually didn't know anything about career coaching. I thought I wanted to be a psychiatrist when I was growing up, that I wanted to help <laughs> people. That's the only what thought uh I looked at helping people as psychiatry. And then as I got older and I was in school, I realized it's not psychiatry, it's sociology, it's social work. And then from social work, I realized that my strong interest in business could actually come into play. And I I gravitated towards career coaching, that I could match um, healthy, vibrant people with great careers. And that's where I, um, I got into the career scene, and, and I've been in it ever since, and it's been the perfect spot for me. What is the difference well, between a career coach and a career re- recruiter? Yeah, it's, there's a big difference. I don't contract with companies to place people in their jobs. That's what a recruiter does. A career coach is taking an individual like yourself, JC, or Nathan, and helping you determine what direction you want to go and how do you get there. And how do you get there requires uh, professional packaging, if you will, and marketing, the resume, LinkedIn, interviewing, image consulting, all those things that help people move forward in their career and advance them. So it's a big difference between recruiting and being a career coach. What is it like looking for a new job right now with COVID and the economy being in such a questionable state? Well, I would be not being truthful with you if I didn't say it was challenging, Michelle. It is very challenging for most people. However, I want to honestly proclaim this, that many people are finding jobs, and it's, it's wonderful. However, you've got to be strategic about it, and you've got to understand there are fundamental things that everyone must do. And once you understand those things and you create your playbook, if you will, create your step-by-step, you can get there. It's just so many people don't, don't know that there are certain steps that you must take in this challenging and competitive job market. What, what advice would you give to someone who is searching for a job? Mm -hmm. Well, number one, uh, regardless of what level you're in, you really do need to have a resume. You know, years ago, people would tell me, oh, resumes are going to be obsolete. In, In the future, we won't need a resume. Well, maybe that's true in the future, 
but right now we do all need a resume. So get a resume done. Um, and then the other crucial thing is LinkedIn. You can't avoid LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the marketing tool that every professional needs to use. It's the way that you get exposure. It's how you market yourself. So know and love LinkedIn and create a great profile. Thirdly, get yourself organized mentally about what do you want to do and why you should be in that position. A lot of people just haphazardly go about their job search. You've got to have a plan. And if you have a plan, you can work the plan. So there's a lot of advice that I can give. And I've been doing this for over 20 years, so there's a bunch of stuff in here <laughs> that I'd love to get out. But if I could just get it into three things, resume, LinkedIn, and know your plan and work it. Well, social media is, uh, uh, is that's the era that we're in right now. Yes, so it is. You have to have a plan. Yes. And you have to be able to navigate the different sites. Uh, mm -hmm. What are some of the, the most uh, sites that people you know, use mm -hmm. on LinkedIn or, mm -hmm. or job sites? Well, number one, you have to be on LinkedIn. LinkedIn has become a tremendous resource for job leads, okay? Number two, we have Nathan Kendaner with us. He has a wonderful job board called Jobs Mall, and you're going to hear all about it. It is the most exciting job board that exists today. So I would say... One minute. Get, get used to using LinkedIn, and you'll learn more about Jobs Mall in a minute. <laughs> I have to put in a commercial for my good friend uh, here. You know, <laughs> uh, we're going to bring Nathan on uh, uh, later, but yeah. uh, that is some excellent advice. And you know, right now we're going to take a station break, but we're going to come back and continue our conversation with Susan and then bring Nathan on to help us discover how to go about getting our next future job. It's your life. I'm James Cooley. And I'm Michelle Cooley. All right, we're clear. Ready for segment two? Ready? In three, two, one, Mike is hot. Welcome back to It's Your Life. I'm James Cooley. And I'm Michelle Cooley. Wow, Michelle, you know, I tell you, our listening audience are uh, eating up this information. I mean, it really needed to hear this. And they needed to uh, understand that uh, all hope is not gone mm -hmm. if they do the things that uh, Susan is telling them uh, about right now. So, uh, I just hope they got pens and paper and writing this down. But we're going to continue our conversation with Susan. Hey, Susan, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about uh, your book, How Smart People Sabotage you know, Their Job Searches? Mm -hmm. I'd be happy to tell you about it. Um, that was a labor of love for me. I know that when you introduced me, you called me an author. I don't consider myself an author. I, I just needed to get all this information out in one format. And essentially that book, J JC, is a, a bunch of my stories of things that I've observed that people have done that are very unsuspected and you wouldn't think about it, but they have sabotaged their success. And they needed to just, in my opinion, they needed to be aware of their behaviors. For example, job search starts when you're still working. Job search starts by the way that you treat other people and the, the reputation that you've established and how you've treated service providers and people that you've come in contact along the way. Because people remember these things. And the thing that, that uh, job seekers have to realize is that they need other people to help them land their next job. It's very important. So connections is the key. And if you've got good connections and you have a good reputation, you've treated people well, those people are going to help you when you most need them in your search. So um, how, uh, how smart people sabotage their job search. I did put the word executive in the title, but it's for everyone. Now, I'll tell you a little secret. I put executive in the title because I knew my executive clients wouldn't think it applied to them if I didn't say executives in the title. So <laughs> it's for anyone. It's even for someone in college, a young person that's looking for a job. If you know these 10 mistakes and you apply them, I promise you it will help you in your career going forward. And, and uh, one of the mistakes you mentioned uh, that people forget, they forget about 
the importance of first impressions. Can yes. You, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. First impressions will always be important. When you first meet someone or they first meet you, they, people can't help it. Our brains are thinking about, uh, or they're making assumptions about us. And so you always want to um, make a good impression, dress with respect for others, and that's the key. I've had people through the years say, I don't need to get dressed up because I know who I am. I'm very experienced. If they're going to judge me by the way I look, I don't want to work for that company. Well, that's the wrong way to look at it. You dress for the other person out of respect for them, and it reflects on you. So we never want to try to make a second first impression. Make a good impression right from the get-go. Wow. That's, that's deep. <laughs> <laughs> it's a basic fact of life. And you're right. You, you should always uh, try to make an impression, positive impression, mm -hmm. that is. Uh, and anything that you do, especially when you are out searching and seeking for a job mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, one other uh, uh, thing you talk about is we make, hard, we make it hard for others to feel good about <laughs> helping us. Yes. Can you tell the audience a little bit about that? Yeah. You know, if you ask some people about what kind of job are they looking for, they can get very specific and they can give you a whole litany of requirements. And what I've seen over the years is that if I have given a job lead to someone as a gift to them, let's say, it, the in return somebody might say, well, that job isn't for me, or how did you get that, or that doesn't quite fit me, or I wouldn't ever want to do that. Well, that makes me feel bad, and I've been thinking of you and trying to help you. If you give that kind of feedback back to me, I may never try to help you again. <laughs> So in, in the book, I say, listen, even if someone gives you just a harebrained lead, okay, where you think, where, where did this come from? Always be gracious. Always reply back, thank you so much for thinking of me. The mere fact that they're thinking of you, express gratitude and say, hey, if anything comes of it, you'll be the first to know. Wow. Attitude leads to gratitude. Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. You know, and uh, th that is some great advice because we should always respond back, uh, even if we didn't get the job. Mm -hmm. right? Because you never know when another opportunity might come your way. Absolutely. You know, so uh, thanks for that great advice. Sure. You know, I tell you, we're going to bring on our next guest. We're going to come back to you, Susan. Sure. But we're going to bring on our next guest. And uh, this young man right here, I'm very impressed with uh, uh, the little information that uh, I know about him. Michelle, do you mind telling us? I listen to audience a little bit about our next guest. And I will. Um, Nathan Ken Danner. Nathan Ken Danner is the co-founder and CEO of Jobs Mall, the world's fastest growing career community for Generation Z. After struggling to land a job himself while he was in college, after using traditional job boards, he realized how disconnected hiring companies are to the Gen Z population looking for jobs. Since its launch in 2018, Jobs Mall has grown to a size of 800,000 plus job seekers and partnered with thousands of organizations ranging from small businesses, nonprofit organizations, startups, and Fortune 500 companies utilizing video resumes and video job ads. In 2019, Candana was honored as Forbes 30 under 30 due to his achievements and contributions to the employment technology scene. Wow. That's deep. Wow. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Hey, Nathan, welcome to the show. Uh, glad to be here. Thank you very much. Oh, talk my. more to the end of the microphone. <laughs> you, Thank can, you very much. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Thing? 30, I'm, 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 I'm skipping a little bit around, but tell us a little bit, tell the audience a little bit about just 30 under 30. Of course. Um, uh, it's hard to explain it without um, uh, explaining Jobs Mall, uh, but basically what we do is, if it's okay, let me briefly mention what Jobs Mall is so it's going to make sense. Um, after struggling myself uh, to land a job in college, uh, because when you think from a uh, perspective from a 20-year-old college student looking for internships or jobs, you really don't have anything to put on your resume. You don't have the LinkedIn networks. So, uh, you know, Susan was giving a lovely breadth of information 
But it's really challenging, especially if you're 20 years old. You don't, and on top of it, you don't know what you're looking for. So uh, Jobs Mall has been built on that basis. Uh, and we have connected uh, job seekers with hiring organizations through video. So uh, based on those achievements uh, and uh, the virality that it generated, um, I was honored Forbes 30 under 30 because I'm really young. I, I've been, I started Jobs Mall <laughs> when I was 20. Uh, today I'm 25 years old. So, uh, you know, I have a beard. I know the listening audience can't see that. I have a beard. Uh, so people <laughs> sometimes think I'm early 30s. But when they hear my age, they're like, oh, my God, you're very young. So, um, that's, so that's the uh, gist of uh, Forbes 30 under 30. Wow. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself uh, along with that? Sure. Uh, again, that's the uh, real struggle of a young job seeker. Other than Jobs Mall, I don't really have an impressive long career behind me. I was a student at University of Southern California, um, USC uh, in, uh, in L.A. And, um, uh, and, and when uh, the story of Jobs Mall pretty much stemmed around, we were all young job seekers applying for internships. And the entire process was segmented. And one of my friends finally, at a long, after a long day, asked the other friend, hey, what font are you using on your resume? And what really threw me off is that the fact that I use Calibri can lend me the job as opposed to, you know, um, Times New Roman. <laughs> that entire process is segmented and horrible. So, uh, of course, this is really simplifying the process. But uh, so Jobs Mall has been my uh, mission, so to say, for the last uh, four years. Um, and now we have a very, uh, you, you know, we launched our product in 2018. And within those two years, we have facilitated over tens of thousands of uh, people landing jobs. We have a community of eight, more than 800,000 job seekers. Um, and our approach is we connect job, uh, job seekers with employers through video. So job seekers can post video resumes, do video cover letters, and organizations on the other side can uh, post video job ads. Because the entire process is, uh, without Jobs Mall, is really uh, disconnected. And, uh, and it's not just a young job seeker problem. It is a problem for, I think, all demographics. Um, so with COVID, we started a huge, tremendous spike uh, within the diversity of our user base. So, um, uh, but that's roughly what we do, and that's roughly the background. So it's all jobs and all, pretty much. Wow. You know, that's, that's deep. In your bio, bio, you stated that you realized how disconnected hiring companies are, yep. especially yep. toward toward Generation Z. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, of course. So, uh, so when you put yourself in a position of a company, you're trying to, it, it's not that only one side needs one another. So uh, Jobs Mall, the way we call it is the new talent uh, marketplace for the new workforce. The workforce is evolving tremendously. It's getting very digital. A lot of companies are shifting uh, what they do and uh, adapting to the Two minutes. Uh, new economy. So uh, there is a big, uh, uh, both parties need each other. It's not just, you know, job seekers need companies and companies, you know, it's both parties really need each other. And there is a big disconnect when it comes to how these people find one another. Are you going to post your job on a job board that no one really actually get, utilizes truly? Uh, are you, you can post on LinkedIn, but again, LinkedIn, I believe, misses a significant demographic when it comes to um, connecting the job seekers with the companies. So again, we provide tools in which both parties can maximize themselves, uh, be seen, be heard, um, and uh, find the right person in the right company. Because it's not about the quantity, it's about the quality. Uh, you post a job on job boards, you're going to get hundreds of resumes, but they're not the right candidate. Same thing, you go to a job board, you're going to see hundreds of job posts, but they're not the right job for you. So, both parties really need a better way to connect with one another. Wow. I mean, that's a brilliant idea. <laughs> I mean, Thank so, you but you know what? We're going to have to take a station break, but we're going to come back and continue to talk with Nathan. Uh, I am curious. I got a million more questions to ask, and Michelle do as well. So we're going to take a break. It's your life. I'm James Cooley. And I'm Michelle Cooley. Okay, we're clear. Okay, what? Great. okay so this other segment is... All yours. Okay. Uh, and then at the beginning of the fourth segment, you're going to get out of Okay. So. 
So, Michelle, you ask some questions. I will do that. <laughs> Ready to start back up in three, two, one. Mike is hot. Welcome back to It's Your Life. I'm James Cooley. And I'm Michelle Cooley. <laughs> wow, Michelle, we, we learned a lot about just Generation Z, you know, population mm-hmm. for us, uh, uh, seeking jobs and uh, all the opportunities that uh, Nathan Company has uh, created to uh, help them easily and, 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 and seek these jobs in better ways than, than, than we ever had. Yes, I'm really fascinated by this job small um, um, site. Nathan, what are the, some of the major inefficiencies when it comes to connecting job seekers and employers? Sure. Um, so, as I said, Job Small is the new talent marketplace for the new workforce. And I think the biggest inefficiency when you look at the existing job market is um, there's just a lot of noise. Uh, given that, you know, you have to land the job and the companies need to hire, um, it, it, there is just a lot of noise when it comes to uh, with uh, every resume looks the same. So you have to spend, it's not the resume. And it's not just, uh, you, you know, even the process of interviewing. Every, it's very rare to see an interviewee, interviewee I think that's what you call them, <laughs> um, be themselves. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are all these tips on how to act in an interview and all this fear about what to say, what not to say. And same thing for companies. Companies can't ask this, can't ask that, but you can do a Google search on them and see their photo with a bikini on, but, <laughs> but, 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 but you can't ask like uh, s- certain questions. So when both parties are not honest with one another, on top of it, you add this noise uh, with the increase of content and connectivity, you just have this uh, inhumane process, which leads into, I think, a huge economic cost because... 26% of the jobs that are hired, uh, they don't last even a year. They, they, they look for another job. So, uh, and these are full-time positions. These are not part-time positions. So uh, I think the process is not human. That's what we uh, call. <laughs> so that's the disconnectivity on a very grand scheme, so to say. Wow. Well, how will the shift in education to say to online learning influence the future of the labor market? Yeah, I, I think that's a... Wonderful question. Um, yeah, I mean, we're living in a COVID era, and uh, I, I think I really love the segment that JC and you are doing right now, which is getting America back to work. Um, we uh, we ha- we're facing a huge economic and uh, workforce uncertainty. On top of it, the education world is facing a big uncertainty. Like, are we going to have our schools back open? Uh, what what is the future of education that look like? But right now what we're seeing is we're seeing a a tremendous shift into online learning, which I think is going to open up more online jobs and at least garner a workforce labor uh, market that's going to be much more tech savvy. Uh, That's the reality Mm -hmm. we live in today. So it's going to create a lot of jobs I think that's already automation is going to start bringing on because there's a big fear automation is going to make some jobs obsolete. But I think... Through this online education and the societal shift we're going through, I think it's going to create uh, lots of lines of jobs that we can't know today. So I'm, I'm optimistic about that. I'm optimistic about automation, and uh, I think it's very connected to uh, online learning as well. Why and how? Well, one of the- Go ahead, on, Michelle. <laughs> um, one of the um, areas that's been hit during this COVID pandemic is small businesses. Yep. So how can small businesses position themselves in the era of increased competition due to the Internet? Uh, That's a lovely question, and I think it's one of the biggest uh, pain points. So I mentioned I'm optimistic. Now it comes to my pessimistic side. Um, I'm really concerned for small businesses, especially in the next coming months, uh, because, uh, you know, businesses like ours or online businesses, they can thrive. Uh, they can grow. Uh, you look at the sales of Netflix or Zoom or Peloton, all these electronic companies, uh, digital companies skyrocketing during COVID. Well, how can a barber shop or a small family mom and pop business uh, really thrive when they can't have anyone in there or they can't sell their goods who rely foot traffic, who rely on foot traffic? Um, so we're seeing them shift on Internet. You know, we're seeing some of these companies try to adapt uh in the time of internet but 
that brings lots of global uh, competition as well. So I think it's going to be much more local. I think small businesses have to focus on local internet services. Uh, we, we see that with restaurants these days. Uh, they're doing a lot of pickup orders. So that's, uh, that's definitely a plus. But I think uh, other small businesses, it, it, it's, 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 I'm a bit pessimistic. So we're going to see in a couple months how it happens. But um, uh, th there is some concern there. I got this question. Uh, why and how are video resumes yeah. <laughs> uh, better than traditional resumes? Of course. That, I, I think that's a lovely question. And I didn't have a chance to really talk about video resumes, but that's what we truly do. Um, it's basically, there's this saying, if, if, if they were to see me, they'll hire me. Everyone's this confident. But I, I apply through this you know, uh, hard-to-use website, and I never hear back. 45% of applications never hear back. No thank you letter, no rejection letter. It's just an empty hole. Uh, video resume lets you actually be yourself and show who you are. Uh, it's really hard to you know, relegate everything about you into a piece of paper, especially if you don't have any you know, amazing accomplishments. Right? Like, uh, that's not a problem you would uh, have, JC. You have a beautiful history about your career and who you are and your accomplishments. But not everyone is like that, right? Uh, majority <laughs> of the people. So video resume, you know, it lets you be who you are. So on JobsMall, if you go to JobsMall.com, it's with a Z. Um, we have a video resume studio, which is bite-sized. It's a conversational um, studio in which we ask questions like, hey, what do you think is your biggest strength? And you have all the time. You can answer it on your own pace. You can do it multiple times. Pick the one you like the most. Uh, but basically demonstrate who you are and this is very powerful for the uh, employer as well because employers go through a barrage of resume and they have to figure out who this person is if they want to meet them and whatnot uh, call them screen them uh, it takes days weeks uh, but vi video they can watch and they can find the right candidate and we've been seeing it's very well with also diversity with and inclusion we've been seeing a lot of success uh, when it comes to uh, connecting both parties it, we, I even have a number. It increases your chance of an interview by 84 times. So uh, that's a big number. Um, uh, so, so I think in a lot of lines of work, video resume is drastically better than a traditional resume. Wow. How can seekers and companies uh, who are hiring access uh, job, jobs more? Yeah, it's, it's very simple, jobsmall.com. That's J-O-B-Z-M-A-L-L.com. Jobsmall is built around a virtual shopping mall. So let me briefly mention that. So um, we, it, it's a, a community in which it's a virtual, virtually immersive shopping mall. If you go there to your computer, you're going to see different buildings in which you can navigate. Organizations host virtual stores. Everything is segmented by industry. So you can basically go to... Uh, transportation floor and see all the jobs and all the companies hiring within that industry. You get to learn more about the industry. You get to see what's out there. And once you find a job that you like, you can just apply with one click. Uh, so it's jobzmall.com. It's a virtual shopping mall. And our motto is shop your job. We, we, I, we hate the term job hunting. Because it sounds really barbaric. You know, you're, you're, you're you know, attacking for jobs. And and it, as if jobs are this evil thing you have to hunt down and like you know master whereas when you look at today you can order from amazon with one click uh you can find the dates with one click but when it comes to finding a job which is literally the second thing you say hey i'm jc this is what i do it's arduous it's hard uh, it's it's scary so we try to make that less scary easier better so that's what we do at jobsmall.com is there a lot of other companies out there emulating what you guys are doing? Um, uh, of course, there are lots of job boards, for sure. Uh, but not at a level that we do, because I think we have a very different approach. And our approach is um, we try to we obsess over making this process more human. And um, I, I think there are, I don't want to say there isn't, but uh, I don't see anyone in the labor market, a recruiting space, really having our approach really trying to humanize job finding. Um, uh, when you look at a traditional job board, and I don't want to get too technical for our listeners, uh, but uh, job boards like, uh, maybe I should name them, they, they probably know job boards, they have an idea of a job board is, 
it's all scraped jobs, uh, job links. So you go there, you have two search boxes, you type in sales or whatever you're looking for. You get a bunch of job listings. They're all differently written, by the way. They're horrible to read. Uh, guess what? People don't really like to read over and over again in, the, in this day and age. And then they click on the link, they go to a different site. The link is expired. They go to a different site, apply again. They go to a different site, they apply again. So it's a really, uh, job seeker is not their uh, main focus. And our focus is uh, the candidate experience and making the process more human. Let's make it more human, more engaging, more fun. Because job search and finding your job shouldn't be scary, let alone arduous. So uh, uh, there's nothing wrong with that. So we're, <laughs> we're trying to make this process much better. So that's our... Uh, obsessive focus that's our team's entire focus we have a very dedicated strong team that i'm privileged to be part of so um and uh it's it's really hard teamwork and that's that's why we are i think uh achieving something so that's uh that that's really uh humbling the world really needs to hear this <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate two minutes <laughs> you know so hey, what does the future of the gig uh economy looks look like I think it's really exciting. I think that's um, what this last decade and last couple of years we've seen. Um, the fact that anyone with a car can uh, make money out of their own car or uh, just, just be more, um, uh, just be independent. Because a uh, job means, you know, making a living. And making a living means independence. It's, it's your freedom. It's your liberty. It's you being a better member of the society. Uh, when you look at crime, it's all about societies that don't have access to these. Uh, and that's why education is important, because they're all connected. So gig economy is, I think, uh, tremendously useful in making anyone who wants to work, because I agree with Susan, it's, I don't think it's lack of jobs also. It's, you know, I think what I see also in job search, we sometimes One get minute. too selective. So uh, gig economy makes that, the boundaries less uh, defined. And anyone can just uh, join in. I think the future looks very, very interesting. You see this sudden uh, increase in, for example, food delivery and, and all, all these new delivery uh, gig economy companies and, and apps coming in. So I'm, I'm really excited for it. I think it's a huge service to the society and the job seeker and the worker. That's uh, a, a, a mouthful out there. <laughs> hey, people that are out there that's looking for jobs that are out there that... Uh, need to understand how to go about doing this and also that you might have had uh, uncertainty that the economy is looking pretty bad i think it's coming back around yeah you know we're gonna have to take a station break but we're gonna come back and we're gonna bring susan and nathan on at the same time it's your life i'm james cooley and i'm michelle cooley all righty one more signal so uh Like the sponsors, <laughs> uh, and then we are going to uh, Michelle. Yes, James. Okay, so you, I want you to start off asking Susan a couple of questions after I thank the, the sponsor, and then uh, okay. we, then we're gonna bring both of them on at the same time, and we go into the questions on the back. And okay, and so ask Susan a couple steal, more questions. Yeah, ask Susan a couple more questions, and then uh, then we're gonna uh, go to the. Uh, hot lightning around, okay? Okay, so I'll ask you about two more questions. Yes. Okay. Okay, you want to use the timer too? In three, two, one, mic is hot. Welcome back to It's Your Life. I'm James Cooley. And I'm Michelle Cooley. Well, Michelle, you know, I, I have to always thank our sponsor, Goldsmith Financial, for making this uh, show possible and so we can continue to bring this good message uh, to our listening audience. Uh, very important message. So Goldsmith Financial, I tell you, um, he is my financial advisor. And if you're looking for a great guy that's going to manage your money and also provide you with some insight on how to continue to make money, Goldsmith Financial is the company that you want to see. You know, so, you know, so Michelle, well, we up here getting a lot of great advice. And, you know, I want to bring Susan back on. Uh, and then, we, then we're going to bring her and Nate back on. So, Michelle? Right. Great. Susan, um, what is your advice for someone recovering after a professional setback? 
Well, first of all, uh, my advice would be that failure is not a, an eternal setback. Failure is a learning, and and those people that are striving and who have ambition and enthusiasm, you can expect to have some failures. So it's not the end of your career. If anything, it can be the impetus for uh, something new and exciting. So we want to reframe what this word failure means to the person. And then secondly, we want to learn from it and figure out the steps that, that the person needs to execute on and implement to to make themselves better and to move forward. So um, there's a lot to that, to, to answering that question, Michelle, but the main thing is for people to understand that failure is not the end of their careers. It is generally the beginning of something new. So not trying to be vague, but um, failure is okay. It's just fine. It's, it's a learning yeah. point in people's careers and it can very much be the beginning of something new. Oh, I totally agree with that. It kind of pushes you to kind of see exactly where you want to head in your career for now. Yeah. Um, what, what skills and attributes make a person a great career coach? Well, number one, I think it's to be a good listener. You have to, you have to be a good listener. Number two is having um, empathy for others. And number three is, is uh, being an expert in what it is that you do, really studying and really trying to be conscientious about it. And, and as, you, as you might um, imagine, um, there are many people who, starting in 2006 when we had our Great Recession, a lot of people stepped up and decided that there was a great opportunity in being a career coach because there are so many people out of work. And so out of convenience, they uh, called themselves a career coach. Well, I've been in the business a long time, and, and I know a good coach when I see one. <laughs> I'm one of those people, by the way. I'm a great career coach. The best. But uh, um, one of the other attributes is having into a good sense of intuition about people, who they are, what their brightness is all about, where they're, I like to use the word star, uh, term star power, understanding them and knowing what their star power is and how do they use that power to uh, project and go forward and, and do something great in their career. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I got questions for both of y'all. And uh, in regards, is how prevalent is ageism, et ethnicity, gender bias uh, with, in certain industries mm -hmm. and companies? Uh, I want to start with you yeah. first. Ageism is alive and real and, um, and well. It is, if you're over 50, J JC and Michelle, uh, you already have a strike against you. And I'm sorry to say that, but it's true. Glad I got a job. Yeah, <laughs> glad you got a job. Yep. So, but it's, it's not insurmountable because um, what you want to project is a person that is progressive and contemporary in how you communicate in that first impression you give, in the words that you use, and in the knowledge that you have about your trade, your skill, your craft. So it's the onus is on each of us who is over 50 to be current. Mm -hmm. And if you are current, and that means a lot of things, I know, but if you're current, you exude a confidence that people can sense and uh, they are attracted to it. So ageism is alive and well, number one. And, and Nathan, Nathan, you want to reply I, to the I, other? I, I fully agree. I, I think uh, these biases certainly exist, um, uh, not just age, but you know, gender, um, race. Uh, but these biases exist because I, I think humans have biases. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you can't really um, uh, ignore that fact. Uh, and, um, and, 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 you know, we try to hide that in the job market especially. Like, you, don't, you can't call an applicant, you know, a bit older. You call them more seasoned. You, you don't say young job seeker. You say up and coming. But these are, these are just, you know, uh, terms. These don't mean anything. But I 100% agree with Susan I think the day and age we live in, uh, if you're over 50, I think you have to be open to learning. 
you know, because you have like like I see this a lot. Like they feel they try to, you know, they feel bad because they're older. Uh, I, I see that a lot, especially with job seekers, because we have a lot of you know uh, demographic within within that demographic job seekers, and and I think they should be open minded. The ones that are open minded, constantly learning, because they have something that young people don't have, mm-hmm. which is life experience. Mm-hmm. Because humans don't change. Uh, you know, uh, let let me tell you something a very short uh, thing. In Babylonian uh, tablets. They complain about how young people are not listening to their elders. You know, humans don't change thousands of years. Mm -hmm. So people over 50, they have an advantage over people that are in their 20s, which is they've been around a lot longer. But they have to also improve their skill set. They have to, like, be open to learning. They can't deny the world is changing. Um, But these biases unfortunately exist. Uh, But I think no one should blame that for their own... uh, uh, not being successful, you can definitely fight against uh, these biases. Biases will always exist, uh, unfortunately. And JC, if I, if you don't mind, I'd like to just add this one thing, and you referred to it earlier. Attitude is everything. Yes. Attitude mm-hmm. permeates yep. your pores, yep. and people can sense that. Yep. So it it will um, it overshadows biases that people might have about you. Yeah. So. That, that, that's very important. And, and, and you know, both both of you all are, are right. And I always uh, and always encourage and I always tell you always sharpen your axe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What I what I mean by that is, uh, time will pass by us, and and if we get caught in the past, and we if we haven't uh, upgraded our skill set, mm-hmm. if, if we hadn't upgraded our education, uh, if we haven't surrounded ourselves with, with with positive folks, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, the axe is going to get dull. It's just mm-hmm. kind of like a, a lumberjack yeah. out chopping down trees. I mean, yeah. and just trying to chop down as many as it can. Mm-hmm. But sooner or later, the one that's chopping their axe every now and then, mm-hmm. yeah. when this other guy is chopping down trees and not sharpening their axe, it gets stuck, and the axe gets stuck in the tree. Yeah. Whereas the other uh, lumberjack is is chopping down as many, uh, twice as many trees as possible. Right. Yeah. And that's goes with uh, making sure that you you align yourself uh, with the right experience because uh, times are always changing. Mm-hmm. Just like Nathan over here, I mean, I like the idea uh, about uh, uh, what you're doing, video. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And, and if I may, like, it's because also you're open-minded. Like, I think if I just want to shortly expand on that, I think, you know, everyone has something to learn from one another. Mm-hmm. Like, you can easily dismiss what I'm saying just by saying, what does this kid know, right? Yeah. You can easily <laughs> say that. But, uh, you know, I think everyone can learn from one another. These biases are easily passable, but you need an open mind, and everyone needs an open mind. Uh, it's not just one segment. Everyone, It's mm-hmm. easier said than done. But mm-hmm. Okay, I got this. Uh, probably going to be our last question right now, but uh, both of you all, can you discuss the quote, passion is the difference between having a job and having a career. Mm. Uh, let's start with you first, Nate. I know you're young. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, thank you very much. Uh, I think if I were to make an analogy, like job is like the weather today, and career is like the season you're in. So you might have a sunny day. Uh, you might have a good job, but you might hate it. That might be in a career is the journey you take at the end of the day. Um, so, and, and I think uh, with this quote, passion being the difference, if you have... A, a, if you're passionate with your job, that's not a job. That's the journey. I think career is the journey you take. And, uh, of course, it's different when you have other concerns, when you have to put food on the table. You're not going to necessarily think about the journey. But I think pursuing your heart will always lead you somewhere better. So um, whatever you do, put your 101%. Try to put a bit more, uh, even if it's a simple job, because that's your duty. That's the job you're in. Uh, you should own that. You should be committed to it, that. You should be passionate about it, and it's the journey. So uh, that's. I hope that kind of like answered that. Question. Up and coming, up and coming. <laughs> <laughs> Susan. Well, passion for me is. Um, I don't, and I don't mean to sound trite, but um, what I do sort of just oozes through my pores. Mm. I. It, it comes so natural to me. I'm interested in it. I, I Two love minutes. to talk about it. 
um, it could be even described as a hobby for me because I enjoy it so much. So, um, yes, I know that saying very well. You know, if you, if you have passion for something, you never work a day in your life. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I believe that for me. Wow. You know, we're coming down to the end of the show. Uh, I always like to, uh, for our guests to give the audience how you can be reached. Mm -hmm. yeah. So real quickly, can we start off with you? Sure. I can be reached on my website, powerconnectionsinc.com, or um, at my contact information is online. I'm on LinkedIn. I welcome any connection. Susan Howington is my name, last name H-O-W-I-N-G-T-O-N. So please reach out. I'd love to be connected. Nathan? And you can reach out to me. You can go to jobsmall.com, J-O-B-Z-M-A-L-L.com. Um, and you can find me personally on online, just like Susan said. I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm also on Jobsmall. You can you know, shoot me a message on Jobsmall as well. Uh, once you get there, it'll make more sense. So, um, yeah, I'm open to anyone emailing me or contacting me. Uh, jobsmall.com, J-O-B-Z-M-A-L-L.com. Wow, this has been a fantastic show, and I would like to thank uh, Susan, uh, Susan Howland. Thank you, JC. Uh, Nathan Ken Daniel. And thank you, JC. Uh, I'd like to thank my beautiful wife who co hosts this with me today. Thank you, Michelle. The greatest producer you, on record, Todd. And I, I would thank like to you. thank the listening audience for taking the time to listen in and hope you learned uh, some things. Remember, we are always looking for sponsors so we can continue to bring this great message to you. It's been a fantastic show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Until next week, it's your life. I'm James Cooley. And I'm Michelle Cooley. We'll talk to you later. Hey, we're clear. Look at Facebook. Uh huh? Facebook. Yeah, turn it on. No, 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 no. <laughs> Facebook family, I hope that uh, you got as much out of this show as we did. Um, unfortunately, today uh, we had some problems with the commercials, uh, but uh, so we had to what we did what we call a dry run. But the message is still the same. We're trying to put America, getting America back to work again, and with the two great guests that's that's here. Um, well, I think that uh, the insight was, was powerful. Uh, is there anything that you guys might want to leave our Facebook audience with, a message, a parting message? Keep at it. Don't be discouraged. There's an opportunity out there for you, but be mindful, be disciplined, and be persistent, and it'll be there for you. I, I can't top that, so uh, I, I completely <laughs> agree with that. Last thing is go to jobsmall.com. That's what I would say. Hey, tune in next week called uh, the show. It will be called Attitude Brings Gratitude. So until next week, we'll see you. It's your life. I'm James Cooley. And I'm Michelle Cooley. Thank you. So that's the show we're going to do next week called Attitude Brings nice. Gratitude. I love Very that. Nice. It's going to be a, a, a great show. I really appreciate you guys. <laughs> Please. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a necessity. Sounds great. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you, JC. I, I, got, I, got, I got gifts for both of you guys. Oh, thank oh. you. Thank you, Susan. Thank oh. you, Nathan. Oh, thank you, I'm Michelle. To... Michelle, thank you so much. <laughs> it, it was lovely uh, briefly meeting you. And thank you for the show. <laughs> and, and I hope to meet you one day when things are back to normal and... Uh, Hey, Michelle, he, he left a gift for both of us.